Hello, I'm Richard Vobes, the Bald Explorer, and I'm not out and about filming at the moment. I'm actually uh, at home. I'm waiting for a log delivery. Regular viewers will know that I have an SE iron heart in my kitchen. It's how I heat up my water. I um, hang out my clothes to dry, given that we're in the spring and we've had some amazing weather, it's not so important, but on those cold days and in the autumn and the winter, it's how I manage to dry my clothes, which is fantastic. Um, and also I cook on it and it warms the house. So it's um, a marvelous thing. Uh, I like having a, a wood burning stove uh, because instead of giving the money to the big six corporations, I give it to a local firm who supplies me with wood and wood, as you know, is a sustainable product. Anyway, so um, that's why I'm not out and about. Uh, however, I wanted to take this opportunity really to have a chat with you because um, there's been a lot of great comments regarding the in search of Sussex and particularly following um, Off the Beaten Track by uh, Arthur Stanley Cook, this book that was written a hundred years ago and looking at some of the places that he took walks to and seeing what, if any, changes have been. Uh, Arthur Stanley Cook is an interesting man and actually going to do a bit of a biography on him. I have to uh, thank um, Lee Lawson, Nick Rowland and Lisa Fox who have uh, taken it upon themselves and, and actually also Linda Kane uh, viewers who've taken it upon themselves to do some bits of research to find out more about this author and I've been collating the information now uh, I'm going to put it together and put together some form of biography ab about this chap. He wasn't a historian um, and he wasn't really a writer, although he had written a couple of books. Um, he has had tragedy in his life um, and has, uh, yeah, he's a, he was, a, I think, a, a gentle and pious uh, chap, um, a devoted Christian. Uh, he played the organ and um, he loved, obviously, getting out into nature and walking. So it's fascinating to follow the places in his book. So I thought that would make an interesting presentation. Now, because the videos have gone down so well and I'm filming them in a slightly different style, you may have noticed um, more cinematic, I suppose, than many of the previous walks that I've done, done particularly during lockdown when I was pretty much limited to small camera on a stick or a handle um, because I could only film when I was technically on my uh, lockdown exercise. But prior to that, I was also doing a lot of uh, selfie stuff, I suppose, with the same camera, um, walking about, showing point of view, and then me, and that sort of thing. But I do hark back to traditional filmmaking skills and techniques of um, taking a camera out and putting on a tripod and filming uh, and, and making the countryside, particularly in the heritage and the landscape and nature where I can film it, um, mammals and things like that where possible, uh, more, I don't know how you would describe it, just better filmed, more cinematic, I suppose, more sumptuous where the, the colors are fuller and we can hold the image and, and make it look lovely. Uh, and I want to do more of that. But I've been aware really from comments that people have left and people have said to me, they said, oh, I wish they were longer. People have often said that, I wish they were longer. Now it is quite hard um, when you go out with a camera and a tripod and a pack of lenses um, and props and bits and pieces and you're doing these treks across the countryside um, and you want to get shots of me, shots of the landscape, shots of cutaway shots uh, which might involve lots of different angles, high, low, all over the place. It takes a lot of time setting all that up and you'll notice that there's a lot of sort of traveling shots that I do. Very short, some of them, very short, couple of seconds if that, just of me 
and you'll be surprised because sometimes I set the camera up and then I have to run quite a distance from the camera and then look like I'm walking back uh, and I'll only use a few seconds of that and lots of that and of course all that takes time and at the moment I've um, set myself up with this bit of a, a regime where I try to do a daily video and then I so I go out in the morning early film get back by lunchtime edit then I'm doing a live reading which I do in the afternoon at four o'clock at the moment um, some old classic books or books about heritage landscape nature that sort of thing related to my theme um, that's live and we spend an hour doing it that at four and then at eight o'clock um, after I've managed to light the essay and had something to eat I do something called the Vogue show which is on a different YouTube channel in the evenings so my workload is pretty busy um, and so it's it's quite hard to do this new format every single day and we've been blessed by the weather and what have you so I thought wouldn't it be great to work on um, a longer format so that rather than trying to get these videos out every single day as such one could make a 20 to 25 minute production make them of the same quality um, but then it would give me more breathing time in the program to, to go in depth a bit more about the subject matter to bring in some graphics to bring in some maps because people often ask me about well we'd love to see some maps to show you the route and stuff um, and spend more time putting it into a, a more sort of televisual episode uh, and produce one of those a week I know there's a lot of youtubers who do just one one thing a week but I don't want to lose the 10 minute video every day uh, and so I thought well what we could do there is when I'm on location filming and building up this one larger program I could um, very often give you a, a, a sort of behind the scenes vlog of the day the things some of the challenges I could put in some of the errors some of the things that went wrong and we often get some of those um, I could give you uh, as I say a report on um, how it how it went today I'm up in Shipley which is in West Sussex just off the A24 um, a place in the 19th century famed for the Shipley gang yeah now of course you may have already seen these videos uh, because um, this will go out at the end of the week I mean I know it's going out now to you but to me it's going out at the end of the week so um, I would have edited and put these videos up but if you haven't seen them then obviously you can go and check out and and sometimes on on some locations when you're going there you'll see something that's not part of the program uh, and sorry that's my phone going off you'll see something that's not part of the program and you think oh wouldn't it be great to show that and I could stop off so you see a nice church you could just stop off quickly get uh, the little camera and um, wander around there and do a very raw vloggy type thing put that together as a daily report and then you have the presentation at the end of the week um, in which you you show what you've put together that week so that's that's very much the idea that I'm thinking of working along to rather than these 10 minute walks perhaps two three four which are a bit bitty um, and you can watch them in one in one hit so I'd be interested in your thoughts on that do give me your comments in the comment box um, and yeah it also may mean that I can have time to use things like my drone and actually get that flown and get some um, flying shots in at the moment I'm working very much hand-to-mouth getting out there filming bringing it back editing uploading it getting it ready for the next day and then getting on with the live stuff that I do so it has been um, a bit frenetic really so I'm, I'm just trying to make this so that the quality is is still there but also that my working day is not too stressed so that I can keep the content coming anyway that's uh, that's the plan uh, let me know what you think I'd be interested to know uh, in the meantime if you want to support me you can always become a patron I do have some mugs 
at thebaldexplorer.com. I don't really get very much money, actually, by the time the mugs are manufactured. It's probably about a quid, I think. If No, I think less than that. I'm not even sure. It's not very much. But if you want a mug, you're very welcome to buy one or you can become a patron and support what I do. Give me a thumbs up um, and I will see you when I'm out and about. I'll let you know how the progress goes. But in the meantime, thank you so much for watching. Take care and I will see you on the next video. Bye-bye for now.